If you think consumer demand for the Model 3 is strong, think what it will be for the Model Y, the sort of affordable compact crossover. According to E.W. Niedermeyer of the Daily Kanban, Tesla has begun soliciting quotes from suppliers who might be interested in providing parts for the Model Y. They tell Niedermeyer that the company is telling them the start of production is currently scheduled for March of 2020. Previously, Musk indicated Tesla would start building the Model Y in 2019. What will the Model Y look like? Elon started out be saying it would be built on an entirely new chassis. Then during an earnings call last July, he walked it back. He said, I think in a prior call, we publicly had said that Model Y, or our compact SUV, it's called Model Y, it may or may not be, would be a totally new architecture. Upon the counsel of my executive team, thank you, thanks, guys who reeled me back from the cliffs of insanity, much appreciated, the Model Y will in fact be using a substantial carryover from Model 3 in order to bring it to market faster. Crossover SUVs are the sweet spot to the new car market globally, a fact Elon is well aware of. He says, people prefer an SUV. And in fact, the SUV market is larger. It's the biggest single product I believe in the world. Perhaps the question on most people's mind when thinking about the Model Y is, will it have falcon wing doors? Elon once tweeted that either the Model 3 or Model Y would have them, but he actually deleted that tweet not long after. While they certainly make a statement and are responsible for lots of favorable publicity, they also delayed the start of production for the Model X by a year or so. And they continue to be a source of irritation for many owners, especially if they pop open while driving. Others are supremely happy with their special doors. Perhaps those same engineers who cautioned Elon about using a completely new chassis will also talk him out of doing some crazy thing with the Model Y doors. The Falcon wing doors may be an asset on the low-volume Model X but could arguably be a hindrance on the A-car intended for large-volume production like the Model Y. One person who seems to be fed up with Elon's overpromise and under-deliver management style is Steve Wozniak, co-founder of Apple. The great and powerful Woz told people at the Nordic Business Conference in Stockholm last week that he once believed in Musk's promises particularly in regard to when fully autonomous technology would be available on Tesla cars, but does not anymore. Vozniak said, then added, I believe that stuff, what he says, can you really believe in him? Is he just a good salesman, like Jobs, and may not be there in the end? He also slammed Tesla for rolling out self-driving tech that is in beta mode, which makes customers part of the validation process. He called it kind of a cheap way out of it, and suggested rivals like Audi and BMW were actually leading the autonomous driving field, especially in the US. He says he and his wife prefer to drive their Chevy Bolt most of the time, reserving their Tesla for longer trips so they can take advantage of the supercharger network. There are many unanswered questions about the Model Y will it be built in Fremont or at a new factory? Will it have falcon wing doors or some other form of G-Wizard agreement to garner headlines? Will production begin in 2019? 2020? 2021? No one, other than Elon, has a clear idea, and even Elon doesn't know for sure. One thing we can count on is a splashy introduction party like the one for the Model 3 sometime later this year or early next year. Musk is good at those. He is less successful at matching the hype he creates with targeted timelines. So far, that hasn't hurt sales of Tesla products in the slightest. But competitors are waiting in the wings and Tesla won't have the stage all to itself too much longer. The legacy automakers have one advantage Tesla does not. They know how to crank out millions of vehicles a year that are finished to a very high standard. Tesla has yet to prove it can do the same.
The 2019 Silverado design isn't a giant departure from Chevrolet's current design language, but it does bring the truck into a much more modern, and slightly more car-like, shape. At the pickup's reveal earlier this month, Chevrolet actually showed us early sketches of the pickup and what designers aimed for. The sketches show a design quite similar to the 2019 Silverado design in its final form with thin headlights, a prominent grille and plenty of surfacing on the truck's side profile. In photos, the design looks rather plain, but in person, we do think the pickup comes into its own. One thing we noticed with the 2019 Silverado design sketches over the production truck, the wheel wells look much more square inch the sketches. The 2019 Chevrolet Silverado moved away from the squared off wheel wells in favor of a more modern style. Engineers and designers also worked hard to improve the truck's aerodynamics, which meant rounder shapes made the most sense. The design looks neither old, nor retro, which we feel is an excellent break from the Silverado's recent design trends. While it may have lost some of its buff looks, the streamlined design works in our eyes, and we quite like the subtle nod to the past with the DeBoss tailgate at the rear over a Chevy Bodie badge. According to Forbes, Amazon founder Jeff Bezos has a staggering fortune, he's the richest man in the world, worth about $108 billion. And he's been busy. Just in the last year, Amazon acquired Whole Foods, began allowing Amazon Prime members to watch its movies and TV shows on Apple TV, created a camera that can help you pick out nicer outfits, was granted patents for delivery drones with wings and legs and much more. But back in 1994, when a 30-year-old, newly married Bezos quit his Wall Street job to start Amazon, the business was pretty simple. It sold books. Bezos tells technology blog GeekWire, when we opened our doors, we had 10 employees. I was driving the packages to the post office myself in my 1987 Chevy Blazer and dreaming one day that we might have a forklift. Only three years later, in 1997, Amazon went public and Bezos' wealth catapulted to over $12 billion. But you wouldn't have known it by the newly minted billionaire's car. Despite his windfall, Bezos swapped out his 1987 Chevy Blazer for only a modest upgrade, a Honda Accord. That's according to a profile CBS's Bob Simon did of Bezos in 1999 for 60 Minutes, recently resurfaced by GeekWire, showing Bezos sporting khakis, a button-down and driving the car. Simon asks Bezos, what's with the Honda? After a laugh, Bezos, who owned roughly $10 billion in Amazon stock in 1999, responds, this is a perfectly good car. During the interview, Simon also discovered Amazon's then headquarters in Seattle shared a street address with pawn shop, a heroin needle exchange and a porno parlor. And inside, Bezos' desk was made out of a repurposed wooden door and two by four pieces of wood. In fact, the entire company used desks made of doors as deliberate message. Why so frugal? Bezos explains to Simon, it's a symbol of spending money on things that matter to customers and not spending money on things that don't. By 2004, Amazon employees were still using door desks, notes Fast Company. And in 2013, according to Brad Stone's book, The Everything Store, Bezos was still driving a Honda, though a slightly bigger model. Today, Amazon has a $620 billion market cap and reported $43.7 billion in revenue during its third quarter in 2017 alone, a 34% increase from the same quarter in 2016. Bezos has some bigger extravagances, like multiple homes, a private jet and Blue Origin. Yet, Frugality remains one of Amazon's core principles and the company sticks by Bezos' early mentality. Amazon even gives out an accolade called the DoorDesk Award to employees who come up with ideas that save money. 
According to Amazon, constraints breed resourcefulness, self-sufficiency and invention.